Hello guys, and welcome to a very special series uh, that's put on by Tim and myself. It is the Order and Chaos Fight Night, uh, which we, uh, Tim challenged me. I did. Uh, said, hey, Order and Chaos just came out. You, you gotta build one deck for every one of the new IDs, and then we're gonna face off. And there was much taunting. Uh, and <laughs> There was much taunting. And there was much taunting. So, first things first, uh, if you want to see all of our deck lists for this series, then you can find them courtesy of this link. Nice. Uh, <laughs> that's where all our deck lists are, and we're going to get right into the first game of our Fight Night series, where Tim plays Geiger in Deep Space, and I play Kim the Hammer. Humanity's Hammer. Humanity's Hammer. Um, let's start off with you, Tim. I like to call him Edward. Talk, talk about some Gagarin for us. What, uh, what's your deck trying to do, and what should the viewers out there be looking for? So, I saw the Gagarin ID, and I was like, this is cool. Yeah. This is neat. Yeah. Uh, immediately, my mind went to assets. Uh-huh. Everything costs one extra to trash, additionally, in theory. Yep. It was great. I was like, okay, so, like, Melange is good, pad campaigns are good. And then, I was looking through my cards, and I was like, wait a second, RSVP <laughs> is money. <laughs> And yes. so then I spent six influence on RSVP. And now, put three in. tell tell us uh, there. There's been a lot of question marks about RSVP and these Geiger index mm -hmm. because does Lotus Field not do the same thing for one less influence? It does plus two res cost in theory plus two res cost, but it also <laughs> yeah it does. <laughs> So basically, it's an extra three influence for minus two res cost on those RCPs, which is actually pretty critical, because mm -hmm. you being able to get one of those up on turn one or two is huge. It's very the, important. The, the game plan, at least. So it turned into more kind of a rush style. It did. Remote. I was also, I spent eight of my influence on two red herrings and two ash AXPQ9467437473. <laughs> okay. Duh. Uh, with the idea of building a server that has at least three pieces of ice, and then a, one of each of those upgrades, if not more, double red herrings is sick. Yeah, um, it's great. And just taxing the runner to where they can't trash those. So if they even do get through it and score an agenda, the window is open for me to just do it again. The next one comes back in. Yeah, yeah wicked. Well, uh, on my side, Kim uh, is basically going to be using a very standard kind of potentially a new back to basic style uh, icebreaker suite and just trying to get accesses. I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do with Ed and that seems to be the right thing to do. Uh, what I'm doing. The, the greater you can use his ability, obviously the better that choice was and just seeing cards and having the ability to trash those operations is what you want and so it's not really that tricky, right? Uh, my influence, one of the things I did do, which is kind of a shout out back to an old wizard deck that I had, which is HQ Interface over Nerve Agent. Um, there's some MU things still going on in Anarch, Mem Strips help, certainly your choice of console helps, but I wanted to try out Vigil just to see if like you would want to keep a higher hand size in order to prevent the trashing out of the hand, uh, because the lower that hand gets, the better it is for Ed. Right, you know, for he, sure. He can curate it more. So I put a couple HQ interfaces in there because I wanted to be able to lock it down, drop an interface, and then just always access two. I don't necessarily want to access five. I just want to always have two, and I think that's a really solid game plan. Can't yeah, purge out of it. that's completely fair. Can't uh, do anything. That's been the benefit of HQ over Nerve Agent forever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just consistent. Um, also doing three special orders, and then the standard Young... Like classic Steven GCD special. Young Corroder, Mimic, and then the the... Black horse, the dark horse here is two personal touch. Uh, trying to basically get that Yogg to a point where it can get around Lotus Field and and even in some matchups hit and mimic with it. You know, now, were you running data suckers as well? I was also running data okay. suckers, but I was I put Jin in because I wanted just like the imp medium parasite data sucker thing. How many times have you used that Jin? I tell you what, I I am well known for my not being able to use Jin, not ever feeling like I can play it, tempo being off on that card for me all the time. But I put it in, and so we're gonna see how it does. Uh, so you've got Kim facing off his Gagarin. Your deck, tell us what we should be watching for during this match that we're about to go into. <clears throat> I mean, I, I would say just keep a lookout for me trying to rush agendas out early and just get them going. Hopefully you can't score them because of RSVP or a Chimera or something like that, just stopping you. Yeah. 
um, sort of like a mod super modernism deck minus the kill option. Yeah, which <laughs> I don't necessarily know. Right, right. Is there Scorched in this deck? No. Be kind of okay. But I still have to kind of play around it, so watch for that. Um, anytime there's weird plays against Wayland, it's usually because yeah. you want to have a certain credit number to beat Sea Source or something like that. So yeah, keep an eye on that, guys. And uh, also, I'm just trying to get my breaker set up as fast as possible, keep the money going, and uh, get some HQ accesses, disrupt him as much as I can, and score some agendas. Get into R&D, maybe get a medium going. That's kind of the mid to late game plan, is having that huge pressure on Seems like a very solid plan. Both HQ and R&D. Uh, one thing I will be watching for in this game is how well Earthrise Hotel performs, which is a card that I'm, I'm very interested in using, just to see how it feels during the game. And then also Day Job. Uh, seeing if day, day job Earthrise, I feel like, are a pretty good pair for me in like an economy package. So that's what I'm looking for, and uh, let's keep it on a Vigil too. Yeah, I, I, you, I'm interested to see how Vigil does for people. See if your hand size is ever worth drawing about. <laughs> so we're going to go to Steven and Tim in the booth, guys. Thank you so much for joining us, and we are away on game one of Order and Chaos Fight Night. Thank you, Tim and Steven. And we are here with the Fight Night Game 1. Uh, I'm Steven. And I'm Tim. And we're going to talk over a lot of things here uh, while we go. Beanstalk, Beanstalk, the first thing and most important <laughs> thing to see, which is exactly what I said in the game as well. Tim, give us a little rundown of uh, Gagger. And of course, we can find your deck list online. And you can find my Ed Kim list there as well. Uh, on TeamCovenant.com, we've got links to that. But uh, let's have it uh, straight from the horse's mouth. We've talked about it a little bit in the pregame. Let's talk about uh, how it's going to be acting out here now that you see Edward Kim well, is in play. My plan going into this game is to get an RSVP on a remote server. Seems good. Before you get a co-gate out. Get an upgrade or two Ash and Red Herrings in that server and then just score agendas. And that's pretty much... Uh, that's the, 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 the plan, if you will, going that, into the game. That's the plan. It's a good plan, uh, considering... My Ed Kim deck is really just about getting breakers, getting set up, and starting to get accesses. And uh, finding basically the hardest breaker for me is going to be Yogg plus Personal Touch. Which and surprised me, by the way. As it's, yeah, right? I thought you were digging for a data sucker. Oh, nope. no, for a while, yeah. <clears throat> and it kind of, this is the new wave of Anarch deck, so we're checking HQ here. Mm -hmm. For anyone interested, the tokens we are using, uh, we're using our data tokens there for credits and everything else, and then our click trackers as well. So you can find those on our website. I'm actually not using the click trackers so much as just looking at them, which is a bad habit to be in. Yeah. Uh, there's the root. There. Tough one to trash. You know, it's going to be hard to trash when you put it down, but can you take the early tempo hit of trashing it it's out really of hand? tough. I think that you do. I probably should have trashed it here. Um, just because it's, you're, I, I assume you're going to come back in last click. Yeah. Uh, which is probably also not necessarily the smartest thing, but I probably would have done it too. Just um, basically efficient for operation. I'm trying to see if Ed Kim can actually... Uh, it's I'm trying to see if he can put enough pressure on to matter, you know? And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. you got to think you've got three cards in hand. Not a bad shot at something cool. And do we trash it now? I think that you, you probably should. There it goes. See you later. Looks like you had a bunch of upgrades in hand there, too. At least one Ash. And that kind of gives me an idea of how this deck's going to work, even though I didn't see it. I know now, watching... Oh, there's Interns. <laughs> oh, what a, what a bummer. <laughs> Comes back in anyway. And another remote. So I'm looking already, just to take those two remotes, is two credits. Yes, just to check them. So One of those could be an Atlas. You're seeing you the know. power of uh, Gagarin... As we speak. Is it Gagarin or is it Gagarin? Did we decide? Uh, you say it one way, I'll say it the other, and we okay. can please everyone. Gagarin is what I'll say. Gagarin. I'll say Gagarin. What about Gagarin? Where's that going to fit? I don't think any of those are great. It's, it's Gagarin. Okay. We'll go with Gagarin. <laughs> um, can we call it Gags? <laughs> Gags. You got jokes? Uh, so you're going to be... Uh, Digging for something here? What are you digging for? When you're drawing in there, well, what do you have in mind for right what you want to draw? Right now I have nothing out, so uh, <clears throat> we're digging for cards that I can play on the board. Um, <laughs> I'm mainly looking for... See, you haven't shown me any ice, so I don't really know uh, what to dig for. So I'm just going to try to get you to res, and there's the quandary. So that tells me, okay, I've got to get the yog, even though you hate to yog That's an quandary. enigma, right? Is that, a, is that an enigma? Yeah, you just lost a click. Or at least I, I lost you a click. <laughs> And there's Katie and uh, three on Katie. So establishing some long-term econ here. I don't know if this is the best for Ed Kim. I can't decide yet. I do have uh, Earthrise Hotel in here as well. And I think 
if you're going to do Earthrise, uh, things like Katie and Deja make a little more sense because you can maintain that, that hand yeah. while also still clicking for money. Uh, and these, these Anarch Econ packages are going to take a lot of uh, figuring, getting used to, and sorting out. It's in a really interesting spot right now because there's so many options that you ultimately have. It's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, hey, options, <laughs> finally. Options. I feel like other factions. All right, uh, so, so I we... rezzed a root and a pad campaign with the root credits. So I'm uh, just setting up right now. Getting Wicked. some economy rolling. I'm ready. And there's another and then upgrade. <laughs> there's the root that's protected forever. Yeah, um, no, that's just like a devastating server, right? So the reason that this is so good is that I don't have any central pressure happening here. So you don't have to worry about anything. You can put one rung of ice. Now, maybe if I... I don't even have enough money to drop a yog. Like, you can, you're not really worried about anything here. No. You've got at least a turn if I put on some pressure. So I just need money. And there's the ice wall. And, uh, okay, so the hand might be okay. And it's good to see. So now I need Corroder and Yogg to start putting some central pressure on. And I'm just going to hope that you don't have, you're going to commit some of this early ice to remotes and the root. And uh, those agendas are going to start kind of stacking up in hand while you get set up. And hopefully that allows me to get set up in time as well. That, that is a good plan, I think. Ultimately, but will it work? That's the, that's the ultimate question, is will it work? We ask ourselves that every game. We make decisions. <laughs> sometimes they're right, and sometimes they're not. I like you being low on money here, but the root is weirdly, uh, it's mysterious in that way because you're not low on money. I have four money. You can easily res any number of stop me ice uh, in front of that root. Kind of want that to happen just to see what it looks like, but you've already gotten a pretty good deal off that root. Mm -hmm. And it's only going to continue to get better. This card was kind of underappreciated, I feel like, when it first came out for Waylon. People saying, you know, ah, this isn't what Waylon needed. Back when Waylon was really just kind of the underdog. It, it wasn't what they needed because it's just more money. But what it's doing in this deck is you have to pay money to access it first. Yeah. So it's raising the trash cost to five, which means they're even less likely to trash it. And then you can run less of the other economy cards that you would normally see in a Waylon deck. Which, as I was building these decks for this tournament that we had, I noticed I didn't really have a, a solid plan for econ with Waylon, as weird as it was. Like, you, the three hostile takeovers kind of make you feel safe and like good. And then it's like, you're doing asset economy, which is really cool. Um, you've always got Beanstalk, which is kind of underwhelming. But it is, a lot of times you get down to the last few slots, and it's like, well, I need some money, and Beanstalk it is, you know? The, the Beanstalk royalties is a card that I have undervalued a long time. It's always like, well, I'm playing a card, and I drew the card, so it's two clicks for three credits. But there's something to be said about going from zero to three credits in yes. one click that is huge, or one to four, uh, so it snares are alive again, or whatever uh, number of things are available to you again. Absolutely, man. Starting and a remote. You saw a new remote. Starting what some people would call the wind server. <laughs> and now you're going to put some pressure on here. And this is a great little deck. This is uh, one of Gagarin's strengths. Obviously, that could be an easy bluff server as well. Um, I could spend all my resources trying to get in there, draining Katie and doing the whole thing. And it could be nothing. It could be uh, an upgrade or red herrings or nothing. And I've got to pay one just to find out, and I've still got to get through the ice. And there's the first special order used now. Now, how many special orders were you running on? Three, three special orders. So this is literally a back to basics. Just get a rig. This is back to basics. Go. Yeah, seeing if the Anarch rig plus status. Like I also included one of the dogs. Mm -hmm. I like the dogs if you have special order, just because, of course, against Wayland it makes perfect sense. You got those archers. You just can't face check. Uh, you can't just lose to archer. And, you know, some bigger sentries out there in the world. Yeah, that's completely fair. Now, why the dog over, like, David? That is a better question. Um, one, David is not an icebreaker, so special order can't right, search right, him right. out. Um, so that's the main reason. But the other one is, like, I mean, doggy can get you through Sarugi if you need to. You know, it can get you through mm -hmm. uh, Kamainu if you need to. And so it has a little bit more, it depends on what, what you're using it for. If it's an oops card alone, I think David is pretty solid in that framework. But if it's a oops card plus gets me into sentries if I absolutely have to get in before I see my mimic, 
then it's reasonable. Any can search it with special order. So I just like that's, that's the fair. versatility a bit more. Um, are you also running data suckers? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Making sure. I, I didn't see one in this game, I don't think. I did my, my greatest mistake, which is running Jin, uh, which is a, a thing that I do in deck building, and then I play it, and I'm like, I hate this card so much, I just can't. It's funny because I love it so much. Ah. All right, so we're taking Katie. There's going to be some shenanigans happening here. Look at that click tracked. Well-advanced server over there. And now are we going to check that remote? I think you're just going to face check it. You want to face check it. And then I may have like a Yogg and or a Mimic in hand to find out what it is, put down the right breaker, and get in there. RSVP. RSVP is the worst. Because my only answer to that is Yogg plus uh, Personal Touch, or some decks might run Knights, but both of those are two clicks. Or Data Sucker. So I wouldn't be able to get in. Yeah, I can't install Data Sucker right, Run. Right, right. So that tells me I am not getting in there. Correct. I don't want you to know that, though. <laughs> but hey, I got a great shot at HQ right here. I Boom. almost wonder if you should run the route there. And trash it. Yeah, now that you have no no cash, no cash. Uh, that would be reasonable. I'm still my economy's still struggling so much right. that it's a problem. But it, for the long term, it probably is the right call. Yeah, it's tough. But this is what Wayland wants to do, you know, especially now. And I think this idea is best suited for this. Like that pad is not getting trashed. No, it is and not. there's a, there's a couple imps in this deck, of course, because that is kind of the way that. Ed Kim likes to party, apparently. Uh, there's nice Glen Station. Looky there. Did you, uh, did you, what was the thinking behind Glen Station there? Um, I just needed two more points. Yeah. And I think it's the, the best one for Wayland right now as the, the last two points. It can save, uh, it can save some heartache. I was really considering uh, NAPD in this deck uh, just for really annoying amounts of not stealability. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'll pay one to access... Uh, with red herrings in there, and it's like, crap, pay 10 to steal this in APD? No. You're not going to do that. No, I'm not. But Steven then I ultimately did not because I'm going to be accumulating some bad publicity after I uh, score some hostile takeovers. Yep. It's kind of the Wayland dance. And just dropped in a quality time on click one. So now with only five credits to spare, hopefully seeing some, some econ cards that are going to Make a difference. There's a good one. Sure, gamble. And really, I think the best line here is just getting that rig established. Would like to get Data Sucker going. Archives is still open, and then uh, start to put some real pressure on Centrals. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We're gonna go R and D here for free. Score three, three points. points. Good access. Good access, Steven. It hurts my body. <laughs> Passing it over. Just trying a day job. I see a Melange in hand there. You do. I like Melange. I think that's a strong option for uh, for Wayland Econ. Okay, we got a new... Oh, it was a Quandary. Quandary's out. And scoring the Hostile Takeover. Gaining seven money. Gaining because seven and a bad pub. Root. Well, that gives me HQ for free, which is tasty. And you may have done that to make me want to get in there more than I should. I'm definitely okay with it right now. Yeah, because like, there's nothing in there. Come on in and take a look. <laughs> Spend a click. And it's even worse for me because anything tasty that comes in a hand, you might just host on Glen Station. Right. So I was probably a little overly eager with uh, hoping to trash operations. I think it's a very realistic reality. It that is. I have Tim, some thank operations you. in hand, um, and I'm okay with you trash. Like, I think that scoring that agenda there. Because I saw the uh, Yogg is there, you can easily play a Data Sucker. Yeah. I'm still not thinking personal touch here, but... Data Sucker looks great here, you know. Mm -hmm. Just uh, throw it down and get a few HQ accesses with that bad pub. Get some counters. See what that card is. That would be really great. And I think I did a bit more of a utility suite. And Ed, if you're running him like this, in retrospect, he may want just three Data Suckers in the rig and a couple imps, and just call it a day. I was doing HQ interface for some multi-access, which I actually liked quite a bit. Right. <clears throat> I, but, uh, I liked it a lot, too. Um, it, I didn't have a lot of agendas in hand this game, so it wasn't like the the, the jammy jam. The but jam jams? The jam. Yeah. 
Uh, it is kind of, what's it like staring down, uh, I discard one there. What's it like staring down HQ interface whenever your opponent has it, you know? It's so frustrating. It's like, oh, because normally you're like, ah, my hand's fine. There's one agenda, there's four cards. It's not great odds, but you'll take them. Yeah. Uh, and then they start running and it's like, oh, it just makes you sick. Yeah, almost. yeah. It's uh, like, uh-oh. And a lot of times runners will not run HQ super often. But whenever you have a card like HQ interface in play or like a legwork in your hand, it's going to remind you, if you will, to check yeah, HQ hey, more often. Take it's a like, peek. Hey, you put this card in here for a reason. Why don't you use it? Take a peek. So you've got a card over there uh, that's been in that remote since uh, last time, and now you've or you just put I just it in there it. with one over the top. So that seems like ah, uh, that's probably. You know, if it's Atlas, that's not terrible. Um, what else could it be over there that's threatening? It could be another hostile. It could be a hostile. It could also be an Ash Aura and Red Herrings. Mm -hmm. Day jobbing. Day job. I hated to do it at the time, but uh, it's money. It does it does increase the credit stack? And you, uh, I, I find this interesting. So we trade basically. You spend a turn gaining seven. I spend a turn gaining eight. But you get a card. It's true. Uh, so now the economy is looking good here. We both are kind of on our feet. Daily cast is going to keep ticking. Katie's waiting in the wings. And Katie and Dayjob together, kind of a weird thing. It's feeling worse and worse as I look at it. <laughs> it's like, I didn't really think this through. I don't have clicks to click Katie if I'm Dayjobbing. Yeah. And that's the, the really interesting about Dayjob. That's what you do. And that's what you do. You got to go to work. Yep. You got to go to work gotta and pay just bills. put the time in. There's the HQ interface. All right, this looks okay. You got two cards in hand. I get in for free. I got to take that. You, you will Especially because you just hit Melange, so maybe that card that came in hand is an agenda. And let's see them both. What do we got? Pad campaign. There's a pad campaign. Great. Keep it. And there's a curtain wall. Uh-oh. <laughs> Tim's sitting on 20 credits at a curtain wall. It's bad news for, for this Ed Kim econ. All right, so let's see what I draw here. We're going to Katie up. Oh, there's the Atlas. Oh, should have checked R&D. What was over there? Do you know what's on here? Um, I don't remember. But whatever it was, I would have rezzed it. <laughs> I would have rezzed it so hard. And I got to be careful of Archer here. That's kind of what I'm playing around. It all face down ice now is super scary. Until I get I just installed that there. Atlas blank over there. Oh, you did too, man. I remember this. <laughs> I forgot about that. Because you think I think it's the pad campaign. Yeah, because you just saw, that was my whole thought process. This is just excellent netrunner, really. Excellent netrunner. You got me too. Install in there for two for free. Ah, I love the root. Ah, yeah, dude, it's it's gonna go in so many more decks after playing with it in this this deck. And now it really <clears throat> opens up like that curtain wall is definitely online because you've saved so much money over the course of the game. And that face down over there, man. It's just an agenda. Yeah, it just looks like a looks and and feels like a pad campaign. It smells like a pad campaign. There's a dog. So now uh, Archer is a little bit safer here. And I think that's just what you have to. I think I'm running one archer in this deck. This is it's like you can't know that. It's the beauty, man. It's the beauty of it. <clears throat> With us being so wily on these deck types, you never really know what the person's going for. <laughs> Janus. <laughs> Yalmus. So at least now. Face downs are safe, so we can take a peek. Yeah, you're, you're not afraid of. Gonna go check R and D. Right oh, I love a data sucker here. Yeah, your kingdom for a data sucker My is kingdom. great. Come on, Tim, res it. You know you're going to. <laughs> you got. You got to make it look. So now I'm fairly safe. You know, lotus fields are an issue. Some of these big kogas now that are coming out of Wayland could be a problem. Yeah, that's so true. I don't know that, and in retrospect, this rig is an issue. That's a curtain, curtain wall, my wall. friend. Get out. Oh, uh, yeah. Stay out. I don't know that I want to get in there that bad. Hmm. I hope I don't. See one card? It's probably not worth one probably card. Probably not the right amount of caring. There's one unknown. I assume you put the pad campaign down. I assume that the curtain wall has to be still in your hand, or maybe it's up top over here on the melange. Didn't you install it there? Yeah. So it's you probably up top over the, the remote. The curtain wall, yeah. So I think pad campaign is over on the side. Curtain wall is up top. But I didn't check. I checked nothing. Just more on Katie. Advancing and scoring. Oh, and it's just a, it's just an angry Atlas. <laughs> that's I'm a, Atlas. That's a slap in the face, Atlas, what we call that. 
And I really don't want you to check HQ here. Well, it because seems because I have an operation. Yeah, it seems like this is a good time because you have one unknown. If if I want that oversight so bad, Stephen. I know I gotta know one's a pad campaign. Yeah, but there is one unknown in there. There goes the oversight. Nice. Boy, getting the oversight off that curtain wall is pretty cool for me. Yeah. Okay, here that, we go. There's a little Ed. That's good. Yep. Little Ed magic. Is that the first thing you trashed with him? Yep. Yep. Yeah, that's the first one. All right, so we know the hand is clean. Mm-hmm. R and D looks all right, but uh, curtain wall expensive. still is just a bummer. Set up some econ, get Earthrise. the Earthrise going. Yeah. I was supremely impressed with this card. Yeah, I, I, I've played it in a couple decks now. I didn't put it in any of these decks, but I really enjoyed it. I've run the numbers on it, you know, a few times, and I've thought to myself, I don't think this is all that worth it. But in the game, it just feels great. Right. It feels really great. Economy looks pretty good here. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not upset about it. You've got the Melange going, I've got Daily Cast and Earthrise, or Acadian Earthrise. It's, it's an economic game at this point. And it looks like, is that a Sea Source in hand? No. I might try I'm to get a Sea Source here. <laughs> no, it's not. I think it's it was a Red, red Herring, yeah. yeah. All right, so something goes on there. I know it's an upgrade, since Melange is an asset. Which is there still just a bummer. Earthrise, yeah, it's like, okay, we've got to get Centrals going here. And I don't really have, there's not really an answer to Curtain Wall. Like, what's the answer to a 10 strength barrier? Corroder. Corroder and maybe knife it? But. Uh, Are you running a knife in this deck? I, I don't think I was. Um, there's not really, I mean, if I oversight it, just break it once and be done. But. Get an HQ, another oversight, gone. That's worth something. Mother Goddess. Mother Goddess? I like her a lot. Especially if you draw early, choose your only remote. Yeah. It's like, boom, Stop. agenda, go. <clears throat> and it's funny because uh, inside job is seeing less and less play. And those kinds of early pressure cards uh, are just not involved so much. So you can get away with a one, one rung remote now. Yeah. And I think it depends on what the re remote is as well. Like what the one rung is, I should say. If it's, you know, a pop up, it's probably a bad idea. Yeah, not a great, not a great choice. But a mother goddess, yeah, I'm down. A guard is probably the best. Just like, find it. Yeah, you can't. I challenge you. Can't you can't get in there. Of course, criminal with fairy makes it a little bit hard. Was that virus breeding ground? That is a virus breeding ground. Man, the most underwhelming card of the entire tournament for me. I gotta tell you. <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't do much here. I was wanting to build it up and then drop it down a sucker, put a few counters on it, and then make a run. I uh, get through that RSVP so that you didn't expect it. The, uh, the interesting thing about that is I have archives wide open right now, so the data sucker is not really like that. You, you don't need to do that. Don't need to, to get it. It was kind of one of those things. Want to try it out, see how it works, see how it plays, because it's kind of stressful, right? If it's just building mm -hmm. counters over there, it's like, what if he drops a medium and clicks it over twice? And there's probably the remote right after I really go to town on this gin, which is a good choice. We've got 15 waiting on Katie. Yeah. So it'll take a lot to get in, but it's possible. Well, you have to find a way to... Have to find Data Sucker or Personal Touch. And I'm assuming that you're on Data Sucker still. So whenever you drew, I was a little surprised. I thought you were just going to search for a Data Sucker, install it, run, and yep. then run the remote. And then hope that you can get through whatever else it is. Pretty and take Katie. Take Katie, I forgot about that, but... <laughs> There's a lot of cash. You are not in want for money. With the bad pop. Holding personal touch for a few turns here, as I remember. Because there was going to be a moment where it was going to be critical. This looks like a good moment. There's the personal touch. <laughs> Tim's, Tim loves it. I do love it. So that remote is online now. Uh, feeling good you know. about it. But the problem is, I think if there's like an ash or something there, it is awful. And so you just got to try. Just got to check it. And I think we're about to see a big old curtain wall. It's going to be a curtain wall. And it's just another three off route to res that thing. It's insane. Resing for 11 instead of 14. And then you have to pay 11. I don't like that math. It's not the best math. Um, and then it's going to be red herrings. It's going to be a lot of money for you to get into this. 
The problem is you're on five points, you know? Mm -hmm. Like You have to get in there. Otherwise, I would like data lose. sucker and just start hitting, try to hit that central, hit HQ, and maybe even try to get an R&D. But you just can't let that be an agenda over there. You lose. Yep. And then because I have the root up, I always have the three to advance. Three. It's just so yep. hard. Yeah, you can always <clears> advance. <throat> Not even shenanigans will keep you from it. There's a curtain wall. Now that second piece of ice there on that remote server is indeed another RSVP. Aha! Uh -huh. So I was thinking you had a data sucker. Oh, so perfect. So you need two counters to get through perfect. that server. But Personal Touch had something else in mind for <laughs> oh, me. Man. I could not be happier that Personal Touch was such a great, <laughs> great choice for this moment right here. The best choice for this the moment. The best choice. I really love no. how this Gagarin deck is doing for you. It's really slowing things down. It's making me focus on this remote. Yeah. And uh, just a good piece. Red herrings. I was a little confused on this one. Uh, I thought I didn't have enough money to access it and trash it, which I did. Uh, so I had one remaining, which I should have just trashed the red herrings. You have to pay one to access the red herrings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You only have one credit left. Oh, I only have one credit. That's why I yeah. did it. Yeah, yeah. So you couldn't trash it. Well, then I was correct. Yeah. Playing good net runner. <laughs> Math. I remember coming back to it, and I was like, I could have just trashed that. And it was like, oh, no. No, no, I couldn't have. No, I couldn't have. And then going to HQ for free, trying to snipe a two-pointer there that might have snuck in. Not that it would have. So now you really just draw agenda. Yeah, I'm and sure. I want an agenda now. Any kind of a two-pointer over there in that remote is completely safe. You're, you're not getting in there for a while. Nope. But I also can't get an R&D because that curtain wall is just too fat. It's I just drained Katie. That wall it's is just fat. like you've got like two or three turns. But I want it now. <laughs> but I, but I want it now. I was I was afraid of like maybe a stem hack play that you had. Yeah, totally reasonable. Because and look at Jin. I'm just I'm just doing so poorly with. The problem is I installed the setup cards the turn before you forced me to, to cash out yeah. on that remote. And so like it would be nice if I hadn't had to hit that remote to just like get a couple data suckers and start. Pumping them up, and then that suite looks awesome. The the data sucker is, is troubling at, at a certain point. Yeah, that's one way to actually, you know, if I can get a couple data suckers and crane those curtain walls down to six and five strength, that's reasonable. As reasonable as it's gonna be. Yeah, the the getting it down to that low of a strength, though, like they're ten strength right now. Yeah, so it's, nuts. It's, it's realistically you're getting it down to like seven or eight, but then you you have to have several data suckers out. It's just a bad piece of ice to try to break repetitively. It makes me wonder if these kinds of suites, and maybe if just the Anarch thing in general should be all about uh, knifed, you know? It should be just killing these taxing barriers. Because the, the other two breakers kind of very cheaply uh, get through the other kinds mm -hmm. of ice. So Whenever I... Kill the, the, very, the very first deck I built out of Order and Chaos before we even did this was an Everkim deck with the Cutlerly suite. And I always found myself killing barriers more than anything. Yeah. It's That's good like, to know. Oh, it's so big. It's like a firewall. I don't want to break that every time. No, just kill it. Just kill. And Parasite doesn't really do it on those pieces of ice, so you just want to pay through with Corroder once. Because Corroder's not a fantastic ice barrier. It's just what we're used to. I mean, it is the best. It's the best, yeah, but... It still costs money. <laughs> it's, yeah. You just plug money into it, basically. So, what are you doing here, Steven? Well, there's got to be a line to victory, and I don't have one. Um, nothing in HQ is going to be an agenda, but sometimes you get an urge to check just to see. So I got to try to build money and get to a point where I can both threaten your remote server and potentially cash in on, yeah, there we go. Get rid of some operations, maybe. Just kind of hoping to get rid of any kind of shenanigan, fast advancey type stuff that might be there, or just general economy, hoping that, that you have to catch up, get yeah. rid of card draw, anything like that. Trying to slow it down. It's just hard not to take an access of two for one credit, which is there free. There it is. There's the there Alice for the game. It's going in that remote. You didn't bump Katie last turn. Yeah, there's no way I can get the cash here. This is where it's like amped up day job, you know, those kinds of things that my deck just doesn't have. Yeah. And All that red herring is such a problem here. All right, so the game is on. So this is your turn. Look at Virus in. Breeding Ground doing work. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That's a good one, Stephen. Good, <laughs> good joke there. <laughs> I don't know the best thing. It's really probably just try to click three times and hit R and D for a two pointer. Mm -hmm. that, that also, like if you had had like a sure gamble in your hand right now, mm -hmm. you could Armitage, Armitage, gamble, run the remote and get the agenda. Yep. Could but I pay the five? I think so because it's you would be at six. You'd go up to ten. Bat pub. Have eleven total. No, yeah, 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 you would eight, twelve total, thirteen bat pub. Maybe not. 13, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'd have two left when I access, I think. Okay. Just shy. But dang close. I could drop a cache and then just move virus counters to it. <laughs> don't think that that's what you want. <laughs> Guys, don't do that. That's wrong. You could. I, I guess you could have Armitage. 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 Uh, sure gamble, sure gamble. There it is. Get in there. I've already played one for sure. I may have played two. I don't remember. But the, the best the best thing here would be like Amped Up or Stim Hack or something like Stim that. Stim Hack is the card here. We're kind of back to these big, especially it gets Wayland at least. We're back to just, Wayland got a bunch of just big, stupid ice. Or Singularity. Or Singularity. Checking R&D for the, for the tuna. It's an ash. That ain't it. And you've got the and Atlas. that's the game. So there you have it. The first game goes to Tim with Gagger in deep space against Ed Kim, old build a rig. Uh, we will cut to Steven and Tim for the post-game report. Thank you guys for watching, and if you uh, want any of those tokens that you see, we sell them. Thanks a lot, Tim. Have a great day, guys. All right, and here we are back from the booth. Game one. I got to say... It's in the books. Congratulations to uh, you, Tim, on Thank a, you. a very good game. It was a very good game. I feel like I had some, some really... Tough moments as the runner, even early on, seeing that root in hand and like trashing to, it. Yeah, whether or not to trash it. Uh, and yeah, then you trash it, it, and then you interns it back in. It's like, oh, man, that's yeah, a bummer. Interns is an all star in that deck. Yeah. Because of Ash, Red Herrings, and the root, like all of them. Yeah, it made a lot of sense. You don't want to trash any of those things. It really hurt my first turn tempo there. But let's look at what really happened. So the root got up and running mm -hmm. and saved you what? How many credits was that? A lot of credits. Thousands? Thousands. Roughly. Roughly. <laughs> in the rough thousands of credits. Um, so I think that was an all-star for you, for sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, I was very... I guess it felt good to play personal touch and get into that remote. And it'd be relevant. And it'd be relevant. Yeah, and having just like one credit. Yeah, that know. really came out of left field for me. I was not expect. I, I just knew you were digging for a data sucker. Yeah. Um, yeah. That second piece of ice was actually... Uh, an RSVP. So it was oh, a double RSVP. doubled it up, yeah. So I was thinking, oh, he's going to play a data sucker... He won't be able, he'll be able to break the first one, but not the second one. And yeah. It's going to be game over. And then it's like, personal touch. Personal touch. Is like, out of nowhere. I was like, all right. The interesting thing about that, that plan worked, right? Where I got in and I had to deal with the Red Herrings tax, but I actually just didn't have the money to you trash Red Herrings, which is just the worst feeling in the world. Which was the idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like then I was looking at it. It's like, there's no way I can get back in that remote once he draws another agenda. Like there's no way I can get back in there. Um, how did Eddie Eddie's ability feel for you? Um, trashed a couple of oversights. It was fine. Uh, it was mildly annoying at best in this matchup. Mm -hmm. um, I think that it was not necessarily the best matchup for him. Yeah. Uh, there aren't a ton of operations in the first place. Yeah. I mean, there's a handful, but compared to like a dedicated combo kill deck or a scorched earth deck. Yeah, in general, absolutely. He just sings, and then this one's just like, oh, okay, I got rid of some economy. I got rid of some oversights. Yeah. I get rid of the interns or whatever. Well, let's talk about uh, the strength of just basically the barrier attacks <clears throat> during that game, right? Yeah, the, the thing is, Corroder is still just a subpar breaker. It's the best we've got, you know, most of the time. It is the best we've got, but I think. But it's still pretty expensive against something like Curtain Wall, uh, which we're seeing a lot more of now, especially with Blue Sun being around. Uh, and some of these bigger bears, like the Firewalls are coming out now, and a lot of the Asteroid Belt, like these kinds of uh, Constellation Ice are now in the game. So... I'm even thinking that maybe Knifed is kind of the most important cutlery event. Certainly in this Edward Kim deck, if I'm trying to access a lot, I just want to kill those taxing barriers. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I know that in my testing uh, of the cutlery of this suite, Knifed has been the one that I've wanted to draw the most. Yeah, I would have loved um, it there in this it's game. It's just like, oh, I want to kill it. Especially because you have Mimic and Yogg usually. They can break things so efficiently. Yes. So efficiently. Yes. 
Yes. And it's just like, I don't care about your code gate. I can break <laughs> it for free in three counters, whatever. Let, let me tell you what I feel is the most critical play of this game. Mm -hmm. And that is playing that virus breeding ground. <laughs> it helped you out a lot, didn't it? It did so much work. The gin helped too. The gin, yeah. It was sitting in hand for the longest time. It got played and then did a whole lot of nothing because <laughs> the game was basically over. Those two tempo hits for basically no gain, I think were definitely not the way to get into that remote. Right. Ultimately. What was your, your thought process behind playing those cards so, in that moment? I was really just trying to kind of, a lot of times in the early testing phase, just trying to get them on the table and then see what that opens up for me. Like for virus breeding, and I was thinking, well, I could draw into a data sucker, you know, in a bit, or I could even draw into a medium, get that one run, click some things over, and then go back in and maybe try to end the game that way. So I wanted it, it was a passive effect that was gonna keep ticking up, and my hope was that it would coincide with the draw of a virus that I wanted to pump up. Um, whether that be like finding the imp or, you know, ginning out a data sucker. Uh, unfortunately, that just kind of, I wanted to get the, it ticking. The thing you know what about I mean? imp with virus breeding down to me, though, is if you put more viruses on it, I'm just going to purge. Right, right. The idea would be that I play the imp and then I use it that turn. It's got one counter on mm -hmm. it. And then it's like, do you purge that turn? It's like, that's fine if you do. But if you don't, then I can just slide another one on and go trash something else and have it permanently, you know, trashing your stuff. That's fair. As, a, as an option. Now, you might just purge it, and that's fine. Maybe I maybe you purge the virus breeding ground if it has a bunch of counters on it. I'm fine with that, too. Ultimately, it was the wrong decision. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the problem was, like, I just didn't have... There was no good opportunities for me to use it. Uh, right. And I wanted to see, you know, it's sticking up, it's cool, <clears throat> but there's no viruses. And then Jin comes out, and then the game is almost over, and I don't have time. So right. uh, it was hard to see both of those, basically, tempo hits for late gains that didn't ever... Right. See the late game. Uh, the the only one that I could have imagined been worth it is if you ginned for a data sucker. Yeah, um, data sucker, and then move a couple counters over. Might well, have to get a counter first. Have to but... archives, move, move, and then run something maybe. But yeah, it wasn't great. Right, it wasn't great. Um, so anything else on this game? Um, I mean, I think that's it. Ultimately, any changes you would make immediately to the the Gagarin? It, it seemed like a pretty strong. I deck. haven't made any changes yet. So it seems like a very strong deck. I think it's very strong. I think that I might be going to, uh, I think Special Order is okay. There's also a case to be made for SMC. Um, I think that's strong, but I like the HQ interfaces in there. I like the way that they worked. And maybe just drop in a couple personal touches mm -hmm. for a better breaker. That's fair. Might just go to uh, the old Gordian, the old lame Gordian. But I felt like the money was good. I felt like everything mm -hmm. was functioning okay. Take the virus breeding guy and the gen out. Maybe just go up on data suckers and... Yeah. And uh, make it make it tick. Were you running a day job in that deck? I was. Did you play it ever? I played it once, and it was so hard to play. I it was so hard to play, but the money was so good. Uh, so tough. it it is staying in for now. And I think for me, if I'm gonna keep day job in a non like action bonus deck, like Max is a natural fit because you get the draw anyway. Um, but being able to play it in either a tag me Joshua B where I can get it out. Uh, and do something, or just playing it with Earthrise Hotel and Daily Cast and those kinds of cards that take some of the pressure off your actions for your economy. Right. That seems seems really solid. Yeah. Um, I know what I would change in my deck. What's that? I would change Jar to a piece for Lotus Field. All right. I You've think, made the commitment, huh? I think that it's better after thinking about it a lot. But also, why not, a lot why of why not all, all six? Lotus Fields and RCPs and just make I, it happen. I am an influence. I'm only running 14 in it right now. There you go, man. Which Damn. I always hate, but yeah. I couldn't. I don't know what I would put there. Anyways. Well, one Lotus Field can yep. easily go in. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. There you have it. Thank you so much for watching the first game of Order and Chaos Finite. We've got so much more coming from this series. A lot so more. stay tuned. And it's heated. And Yeah. And be ready for heat, some heat. Some heaters. We'll see you guys. See you guys.